Hi there! In this lesson, we are going to do an example simulating a real scenario so we can do a conditional navigation, test conditions, and so on, and interact with user inputs. In this example, we have the following task. Build an app that asks the user for their age and navigates them to different screens based on their input. If they are 18 or older, they will be taken to one screen. And if they are younger, they will be taken to another. We are going to build this logic here. We have a main screen where we enter the age and click on submit. If the age is greater than or equals 18, we are going to go to a screen where we have a phrase saying, welcome, we are over 18. If not, we are going to go to another screen saying that you must be 18 or older to proceed. You may apply this to other scenarios. For example, if we are building an app for handling tickets, if the ticket is complete, then you see the details. If not, you go to the actions, for example. So we have the requirements. You can read here, but we already discussed that. Going back to our app, we are not creating a blank app for that. Let's create here the three screens that we need. First, let's go to new screen, select blank. Here is where we are going to put the input and the button. So let's insert a button, put here in the middle. I'm just going to put the minimal controls that we need. If you want to put images and so on to make the screen look nice, but it's not necessary because you don't need that to make the app work. In the button, let's already change the text to submit and give a different name. I'm going to call btn age. Okay, now we need a text input here. So let's insert, then we have input and text input. Okay, let's just put put here above the button. Well, we can improve a little, just put in also a text saying enter your age if we want. But we also have for the controls, the placeholder text. I can put here, for example, enter your age. The placeholder text will appear here in the control. But if I click on it and start typing, it will disappear and give space to my texts. And then I need to click on submit. Right now it doesn't do anything. Let's first create the other two screens. And we go back here and put the logic. Okay, but first let's rename this screen. That's called screen two. I'm going to call enter age screen. Now a second screen. So let's go to new screen, blank, and here. Let's put the text, so insert text. Let me resize it. I'll make a big text so we can see better the font size. Let me put body and the text will be welcome, you are over 18. This is going to go to the text property of this text. Okay, now let's create a second screen, but first rename this screen. So over 18 screen. Okay, let's create a second screen, new screen, blank. Let's name it under 18 screen and put a text here that says that you are under 18. Okay, I'm going to copy this one from the other screen, paste in here. And since I have the text, I will not type, I will just copy from my diagram you must be 18 or older to proceed. Let me paste in the text property, replacing that one. And here we have the second screen. Okay, now going back, we just need to put the formula here to make it go to the correct screen based on the text inputs. Let's first see how to navigate between screens before adding additional formula to do the conditional tests. So in order to navigate, we can go to the button and put the function right here that's called, guess what, navigate. It's a function, so we need, we need to open and close parentheses. But we can just open, then we see 
the options that show here and also the function description. It's hidden below here, but sometimes it does that. Once I open the parentheses, it already show me the options of the screens that I have in my app. So let's say I want to go to the over 18 screen. I will select this screen. And then I can also see some information about the parameters that the navigate function receives. If I close the parentheses, it will already work. We could play the app and see it working. So once I click here, it will go to the other screen. Let's see, just clicking and then it's navigated to the other screen. Since we are already here, we can also see that we have the back function that will return to the previous screen. Let's insert a button. This button will appear here in the top. Let's change the text to back. So we know what the button means. And in the on select property of the button, we can call the back function. Just open and close parentheses will work. It will take us to the previous screen. So now if I click here, we are back to the first screen. Right. Right now I'm just navigating between screens and I don't have any logic to conditionally go to the screen I want. Let's understand how that will work, but we are not going to put directly in the button right now. Let's create a label to understand the process. So basically what I want to do is check if the number that's written here, it's greater than or equals 18. I just want to mention that I inserted the text input, the modern one, and we don't, ha don't have the type for number, just password, search, and texts. So we need to convert to a number. But we also have the number input. Here I can type texts. So if someone types, for example, 20, that won't work. So maybe it's better if we insert the number input. So let's do that before we continue. I just deleted and I'm going to search by number input. That's also a modern control. You may not find if you just have the classic ones, but you can use the text input anyways. It's just because in this scenario, I cannot type any character. That's not a number. If I type and just click outside, it doesn't work. It returns to the previous number. But if I type a number, then it works. And we also have these buttons that we can increase and decrease. Right. Given this, we also have the default value. Let's leave it empty. It will be zero. And then we have the minimum and maximum. So we have minimum zero, maximum a hundred. Decimal precision, we can put zero. Step, that's one. And it's fine like this. Okay, now we want to check if this number is greater than or equals 18. Let's insert a text and we are going to put the result of this check in a text just to learn. Okay, so here instead of having text in the text property, we want to check that. So we could do, for example, the comparison. We have operators here to do comparisons. For example, we could test if two is equals three, and then we get the output of false because it's false, it's not equals. But if I put two different than three, that is done using this sign, then we have true because two is actually different than three. If I put three different than three, false. Now I could test, for example, 21 is greater than 18. That's true. 18 is greater than 18. False, because it's equals. But I can test also if it's greater than or equals to 18. And we use this sign. So now it's true because it's equal. So we are testing if it's greater or we equals 18 and it's equal is true. So this is the logic that we want to use. In this side, we will have always 18. And in the first side, we are going to have the number that the user types in here. So how can we do that? 
we know that we can reference controls properties and put in the formulas. So instead of having 18 here on this side, we can have, for example, number input one, that's the name of my control, dot value. And this will check what's inside here comparing with 18, if it's greater than or equals. Now, if I play the app, if I type, for example, 14, it's smaller, then it's false. If I type 18, it's equals, then it's true. Now, what I want to do is, when I click on this button, if it's true, I'm going to navigate to this screen that the person is over 18. If it's false, I'm going to navigate to the other screen. So, I just said how we're going to do, because I said with my phrases, if it's true, if it's false. And we have the if function to test that. So this is the condition that we want to test. And depending on the result, we are going to do different actions. So in the on submit button, we are going to add the if function. I'm just going to comment this one right now. In order to comment, I just add two slashes like this. And commenting means that this row won't not be evaluated in the code. It's like just doing nothing there. Just a comment doesn't run. Okay, now I want to do the test. So if, then I open the parentheses and put the logical test. What's the condition I want to test? I have the condition that's the number that the user typed. So number input dot value is greater than or equals to 18, then what do I have to do? I put a comma, and then I put what it will do if this condition is true. If the value the user typed in the text input is greater than 18, I want to navigate. So now I'm going to remove this comment and put in here. If I close the parentheses, it will do these tests and we can see it working. So if the number is greater than 18, it will navigate. Otherwise, it will not do anything right now. If we play the app and we put 17 and click here, it doesn't do anything because it's smaller. So it's not passing in the condition and it's not calling the navigate. But at the moment I have 18 or more and I click on submit, that condition will be evaluated to true and then it will call the navigate function. Let's click on submit and see that it will go to the other screen. Okay, but now if it's 17 or less and I click on submit, I want to go to the other screen. In order to do that, we just complete the if function, adding a third parameter. So I add a comma here and then I put navigate and select the other screen that's under 18. So what will happen here is that it will test this condition. In case it's true, it will go to the second argument, that's this row. So this one is in case it's true. Otherwise, if it's false, it will go to the third parameter. It will execute this function here. This is in case it's false. And this is the complete formula. If it's true, it will execute this. If it's false, it will execute this and it will go to the other screen. Let's see, now we have 17 here. I'm going to click on submit and it went to the screen where it says the user must be 18 or older. I just don't have the back button here because I didn't add to this screen. I can copy from the other, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, now, if I click on back, I'm back in the first screen where I test the age. So now we just saw navigation, accessing controls and testing conditions, and then the if function that will do the conditional navigation. I'm waiting for you in the next lesson so we can learn more stuff about PowerFX. See you there.